when we come to you this morning, we want to lay down all our burdens, everything that is um, limiting us from meeting you, Father. We want to empty our minds and our hearts. So I pray that um, as we stand here and look to you, we would be completely focused on you, Father. Nothing else would occupy us. But I pray that you will uh, you'll make our hearts light with joy for you.
Jeff Rupre, you don't have prayer cards today, so. Yeah. Uh, you can still write prayer cards, they're at the back. If you write them and fill them, we can pray about them throughout the week. So, yeah, you still can write prayer cards back there. Almighty Lord, our Savior, um, we come before you today, Lord. We, we humbly bow our heads, we submit ourselves to you, Lord. Lord, you know our needs, you know the things that we need to pray for more than we do. You know all the things that we need, Lord, before we know it. You, you put the words to pray for in our hearts, oh Father. But we're children, we still don't know how to pray, Lord. We still don't know what to ask for. That we submit all our needs, all our longings, all the things that, that have to be done in our life, all the things that we have to learn, oh Father, the truths that we have to find, the love that we have to show towards others, Lord. We pray that you will help us find this. We pray that you will help us seek this, understand this, and yes, Lord, as a church, put truth and love in action, oh Father. Not just being truthful, not just being loving, but just putting both together, being truthful and loving. Being that being so national, Father. We pray that you'll bless the service today. We pray that you'll bless each and every one here in this building, all those who couldn't make it. And yes, Lord, bless their hearts and be with them in any requests and any any problems they may be, Lord. Because you are a Father, you are your surrounding us. Holy Spirit, we welcome you here today. Touch our hearts and guide us. Ask all this in your precious name, Lord. Amen. Sweet. Okay, so um, some of you guys know last weekend was the old church retreat, and there was a bit of a scavenger hunt for everyone involved, um, which Ash and I made up. Pretty much we just said, okay, what are some embarrassing and funny things that we can put into a list to make everyone else do? Um, and then we gave points, and the points are based off of um, creativity, uh, humor, and all those things. So we put together... Um, a little montage or a video of all the little things that you guys have sent in to us, which is going to play now. Yeah. All right, so something I've been wanting to do for a couple of years now here um, is a talent show, because, you know, we all know, like, America got talent, um, Holland got talent, and I'm always wondering, does the Masses Road have any talent? So if you have, like, a secret, you know, passion of, like, singing and or, I don't know, poetry, or not even real talent, <laughs> like being able to burp the Lord's Prayer backwards or something like that. Um, the 18th of June, after church, at the church location, we're going to be holding a talent show. Uh, if you want to participate or you know people that would want to participate, um, you can contact Ashna or I, um, and we're going to try to arrange everything. It's very, we just thought of it, like, two days ago, so it's very alpha still, um, but hopefully it's going to like develop and become something really cool, and hopefully maybe at the end of each school year uh, we'll be able to do something like this, so contact us and I. My name is Becky Miller, and I'm the discipleship director here at Damascus Road. And Pastor Matthew and his family and a number of other people from the church are in Albania this week on a missions trip. So let's keep them in prayer. They said, uh, the latest update I heard, everyone's in good health, everything's going well. And I know one real uh, focus they had for this trip was making connections with some of the older men in the village where this church is being planted. And so they feel like they've had some breakthroughs in those conversations. So let's keep praying that God will draw these older men in the village to him and that they will help lead their community into Jesus' family. Um, let's receive the offering now if the ushers would come forward. God, thank you so much for providing for us. Thank you for abundantly meeting our needs. Thank you that this church has been so generous that we've not only had enough to run the church, but that there's been enough to serve our community, and there's been enough to serve you around the world, to build your kingdom, and to provide for people's needs all over the world. Thank you so much. God bless those who give, and multiply these resources for your community. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Next week, the food practice team is collecting canned vegetables. 
Every week, the food package team lists on the city, which is our online communication tool, what foods they'll be collecting, and we always have a table set up for that. So every week, if you would consider bringing some non-perishable food items, uh, whether what's on the list or anything else that you want to give, then the food package team puts those together and serves people all around Maastricht with the monthly food packages. Also, the food package team does fundraisers so that they can buy more groceries for people and meet other needs. So today, they're going to be selling sandwiches after the service as a fundraiser. So if you want to grab some lunch after church, there's a table set up right outside the doors. Next week after church will be the monthly prayer meeting. And that will be right after church, right up here at the front. So if you would like to stay and pray together with our community, we invite you to join that. The next drum night is this Wednesday night, May 10th at St. Peter's Strat 6 at 7.30. So if you'd like to join drum for that fellowship night for university students, you'd be very welcome there. And there's a Serve the City service day coming up at Emily Wesley School, May 20th, and they're building a playground. It's gonna be a lot of work, so they need 70 volunteers. So we need as many of you as possible, all ages. There will be tasks that everyone can do, and you can talk to Ashna about that. You can also look at the Serve the City website or Facebook page to sign up for that. Uh, I'm going to read the scripture for this morning, and then we're going to welcome Pastor Ken, uh, visiting from Kenya, and his wife, Pastor Mary. We're really, really grateful that you've come to share with us this morning. Uh, our church has been helping send some of the students in their church in Kenya to school, and helping with some other mission projects there. We've gone on multiple trips to visit them, so they're kind of a sister church for us. So we're really grateful that we get to actually connect with them and meet them in person, all of us here. I'm going to read from Genesis 37. So Jacob settled again in the land of Canaan, where his father had lived. This is the history of Jacob's family. When Joseph was 17 years old, he often tended his father's flocks with his half-brothers, the sons of his father's wives, Bilhah and Zilpah. But Joseph reported to his father some of the bad things his brothers were doing. Now Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other children, because Joseph had been born to him in his old age. So one day he gave Joseph a special gift, a beautiful robe. But his brothers hated Joseph because of their father's partiality. They couldn't say a kind word to him. One night Joseph had a dream and promptly reported the details to his brothers, causing them to hate him even more. Listen to this dream, he announced. We were out in the fields tying up bundles of grain. My bundle stood up, and then your bundles all gathered around and bowed low before it. So you're going to be our king, are you? His brothers taunted. And they hated him all the more for his dream and what he had said. Then Joseph had another dream and told his brothers about it. Listen to this dream, he said, the sun, moon, and eleven stars bowed low before me. This time he told his father as well as his brothers, and his father rebuked him. What do you mean, his father asked, will your mother, your brothers, and I actually come and bow before you? But while his brothers were jealous of Joseph, his father gave it some thought and wondered what it all meant. The word of the Lord. Welcome to Pastor Ken. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. How are you this morning? Good. 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 to be with you this morning. We do. Pastor Ken, Senior Pastor, House of Priest Church International in Nakuru, Kenya. Nakuru, Kenya. So, last year I was here and uh, it was a blessing to be with you uh, for the three Sundays that I was here. It was a blessing. And this year I thought of uh, coming with my wife, uh, Pastor Mary. And uh, before I continue, I just call her to come and say hello <laughs> in English or Jambo in Kiswahili. Can you say Jambo? Jambo. jambo. Say Habari. Habari. Okay, put your hands together for Pastor Mary. <laughs> Supporting back in Kenya, over 200 children. Thank you for changing their lives. So we love you with the love of God, and we appreciate your the, God's doing in our life. So we shall be together for the about two weeks, and I know we shall be blessed. So God bless you. We love you. Thank you. Uh, in Africa. 
Africa, especially in Kenya, uh, when you preach, you don't look at the clock. <laughs> you close your eyes. But here, we have to open our eyes and we have to preach on time. <laughs> and uh, I can't see the clock around me. So if, if I can get a watch on my desk, because this one is not running, it stopped immediately, we landed. So <laughs> if I can get a watch or something to just guide me, I will stop it. Thank you, sir. Okay. This morning I want to share with you a, a, a message titled, Preservers of Destiny. Preservers of destiny. I believe that we all know what we mean by preserving. And to preserve is to keep something from getting destroyed. Is that okay? From any destruction. It is to keep somebody or something alive and safe from injury or destruction. It is to cause a condition to continue and change. When you preserve, you are taking care of it. When I preserve, I'm taking care of it. We all know that God is the main preserver of life. God is the one who is sustaining you. Is the one who is sustaining me. Today you are alive and well. I'm alive and well because God preserved you. Your destiny and my destiny is in the hands of God. I know our parents, our brothers and sisters, our neighbors, our friends, some, some of them have been of help somewhere. But the main preserver of life and the preserver of your destiny is none other than God. If you read in the book of uh, Psalms 36, if you have the Bible, Psalms 36, verses number 6 and 7, the Bible says, Thy righteousness is like the mountains of God. Thy judgments are like a great deep. O oh Lord, thou preserveth man and beast. So the Lord God Almighty is the main preserver. Is a preserver of man. Is a preserver of the beast, all the animals, all the creation. God is a preserver. And then verse number seven it says, How precious is thy loving kindness, O oh God. And the children of men take refuge in the shadow of thy wings. Whatever I wanted you to see there is uh, in verse number 6, the last portion where it says, O oh Lord, thou pre preserveth man and beast. O oh Lord, O oh God. It doesn't matter how you put it, as you refer to God, but he is the main preserver. And so when we talk about preservers of destiny, God will be at the top of everything. And then God usually works through men. As a parent, you are, pre you are the preserver of the destiny of your son or your daughter. You give them direction. You give them guidance in everything that they do. So you are a preserver of the destiny of your child. If you don't give your son or your daughter direction, they can get lost. So you will preserve their destiny by giving them a sense of direction in life. Can I hear an amen? So destiny is that which must or have to happen. It is where you want to be tomorrow, next week, next year. After 30 years, I want to be here. You are destiny. My destiny. So all our destinies are in the hand of God, but we must remember that we are destiny preservers also because God will always bring people that will be under us, people that will give, we will give them direction in their lives. 
So we must understand that our destiny is in the hands of Almighty God. Every one of us needs a forerunner. You need somebody that is going ahead of you in life. You need a role model in life. You need somebody that you can look unto in life. Somebody that you will aspire to be like them in life. So we need a forerunner in our lives. Our forerunners, our destiny preservers. They will guide you where you want to go. They will guide me where I want to go. So you need a man or woman who goes ahead of you. He goes ahead of you. He gives you direction in life. If you do this, you gain. If you do this, you lose. If you do this, you pass. If you do this, you fail. You need a man in your life. I know that God is above there, but God will always work through men and women. He will always use men to preserve your life and to preserve my life. When you go to the book of Genesis, you will all read the story about Joseph. I believe that we all know about Joseph. You all know how he was uh, loved by his, his father. And later he had some dreams and he shared with the brothers and his brothers hated him so much. They hated him because he was the last one in the family. But he was the dreamer in the family. He shared the dream with his father and the family and the Bible says they hated him the more. But one thing they did not know, that Joseph was to be the destiny preserver of his family. It doesn't matter the background of my family. It doesn't matter where I come from. Sometimes God will always make the things that are not to be the things that are, the things that will be used of him. God chose Joseph to be the destiny preservers, preserver <coughs> of his family. He started preparing him. Despite what David, uh, Joseph went through, despite going through the pit, and through Potiphar's house, and through the prison, and later he ended up in the palace, God used him to preserve the lives of his family members. God will always send a, a, a man or a woman ahead of you so that when you land, you won't struggle. You will have a soft landing. Joseph was used of God as a preserver of the destiny of his family members. If you have time, you'll read uh, Genesis 37, 1 to 11, and also verse number 18 and 21. You can read uh, the entire book of Genesis, chapter number 39, also 41, and chapter 42 also. So, a preserver of life is supposed to become better. They're supposed to be uplifted of God. But when you look at the life of Joseph, you know what he went through. It was not easy for him. But God was still preparing him as a preserver of the lives of his family members. I want to believe that you are a preserver of destiny of somebody in this world. You are a tool in the hand of God. And I believe that through you, somebody's life can be changed on earth. I believe through you, somebody's life can be turned around. Through you, somebody's life somewhere can be can be preserved because of you. God can use you the way you are. You may look at yourself and you see that you are weak, just like Joseph was. But I want to believe that God can use you to preserve a life, to preserve a destiny. I'm talking about you, and about you, and about you then. You can be a preserver of destiny for a man and a woman, even from your community. Joseph was used of God. 
to prepare a soft landing for his family in Egypt. You go through that story, you will understand what I'm talking about. So a preserver of destiny will always have a big platform before you arrive. Joseph went through whatever he went through in Egypt because he was preparing the way for his family to land during the famine in their country. When they landed, there was enough food for them because Joseph arrived on time. God prepared him, prepared him before the family arrived. So your destiny cannot be colorful until you, have, you meet your preserver of destiny. Somebody's destiny will not be colorful until they meet you and they meet me as their preserver of their destiny. That help, that small help that you're saying, this is just a little help, will help them preserve their destiny. That little action, that little word of encouragement will help them preserve their destiny. Turn to your neighbor, look at them, squarely in the eye, with a smile, tell them, you are a destiny preserved. So in this life, you may not need everybody, but you only need one man or one woman that will be your destiny preserver. They will change your life. They will change your situation. They will change your future by just, by just doing something, by just doing an action. We need a destiny preserver in our life. So you don't need a million people, you only need one person. That is a destiny preserver. A preserver of destiny will not hold a grudge against you because of what you did for him yesterday, but will tell you it's the Lord who brought me through it to preserve your life. Though the brothers of Joseph did what they did unto him, at the end of it all, he said unto them, if you read Genesis 45 from verse number 1 to 8, he told them, God prepared me. God used whatever you are doing against me that was evil, evil so that it may work for your good. As a preserver of destiny to your brothers and sisters, never hold grudges against them. If they do you wrong, just forgive them and move forward. Forgive them, strengthen them, encourage them, and move forward. Show them that they, they are loved, you love them, as a preserver of destiny. Joseph showed love to his brothers. He showed his love to the father, even when they landed in Egypt. He showed forth the love of God. And I believe I will read Genesis 45. You have the Bible? Let's start with Genesis 45. The Bible says that Joseph could not control himself before all those who stood by him, and he cried, Have everyone go out from me. So there was no man with him. When Joseph made himself known to his brothers, and he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it, and the household of Pharaoh heard of it, then Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, for they were dismayed at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Please come closer to me. And they came closer, and he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be grieved or hungry with yourselves, because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. God sent me before you to preserve life. Whose life? Their life. Because they were supposed to die of famine in their land. 
but God prepared Joseph in advance. Despite the ups and downs that he went through, it was a preparation of God for him to preserve the destiny of his people. I believe that we are an answer to somebody somewhere in this life, somebody somewhere in this world. God is preparing you so that at one point, in one day, you will be able to preserve the destiny of somebody. Verse number five. And now do not be grieved or angry with yourself because you sold me here for God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years and there are still five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvesting. And God sent me before you to preserve you for a, a remnant in, in the earth and to keep you alive by a great deliverance. Now therefore it was not you who sent me here, but God, and he has made me a father to Pharaoh, and the Lord of all his household, and ruler over all the land of Egypt. I believe that God has a plan for each and every one of us. I believe that God will always bring people your way. God will always bring people my way. Please let us be careful as we deal with this man that God brings our way. We may be their destiny preservers or preservers of their destiny. If you can help them, please help them. If you can lift them, lift them. If you can encourage them, encourage them. If you can strengthen them, strengthen them. If you can speak a word of life in their lives, speak it. You will preserve their destinies. God can use you. God can use me the way we are. You can take them to the next level. Joseph was used of God to take the brothers and the family to the next level. Despite what happened in their past, he forgot everything because he was their preserver of destiny. We must understand that sometimes God will cause your enemies to be preservers of your destiny. Sometimes God will always use even people that are opposing you to preserve your destiny. You look at the Bible, you will see the story of Moses. How God used the daughter of Pharaoh to preserve the life of Moses. The people, like, the people that you think that are your enemies, sometimes God will always use them to be of help to you when you are in need. You may not understand it, but if you look at the life of uh, Moses, and the daughter of Pharaoh, the daughter of Pharaoh, was able to preserve the life of Moses. So Moses was brought up in a palace. I believe that the Lord will give you the revelation to be able to understand that. So even the people that you think are against you, and even the people that think that you are against them, God can even cause your enemies to preserve <coughs> Your destiny, God can also use you to preserve the destiny of people that think that you are their enemies. So you are a preserver of destiny. I am a preserver of destiny. Wherever you are, in that office, in that school, in that family, in that community, you are a preserver of destiny. Act like Joseph, say, I am here to help somebody. I'm here to change a life. I'm here to touch a life. I am here to make a difference to somebody. I'm here to leave a mark in the heart and in the life of somebody because I am a preserver of destiny. It doesn't matter what my environment is saying, but I have to preserve a life. I have to preserve a destiny. I have to take somebody to the next level through my words, through my actions. Be a preserver of destiny. So our destiny is in the heart of God, but the destinies of other people are also in our hands, because God will always use us to take them to the next level. So God will always avail somebody to preserve the life of the other person. I believe that God will avail you, he will avail me. 
to preserve the life of other people. You may not know, maybe you are a visitor in this place, maybe it's your first time, but this church, Damascus Road Church, <coughs> have been preserving the life of Kenyans' children. Some of them are living in a, a dump site, a garbage site, but this church have been able to preserve their lives. In that same dump site, we have a school for 67 children that you support. You are preserving the destiny of children in Kenya, yet you are in Maastricht. Destiny preservers. You are destiny preservers. Amen? Amen. These children, they eat from, uh, they eat from the, the, the garbage. They just get their food there. But we put them in a structure within the same place. And uh, through your support, they're now being educated. They are getting knowledge, they are getting skills, they are being equipped. Their destiny is not only in the heart of <coughs> God, but their destiny also is in the heart of man. God is using men to make sure that they, they reach their destiny. You are a destiny preserver. I am a destiny preserver. Continue to do that which the Lord is calling you to do. You can change a life. You can touch a life. You can take somebody to the next level. So let's continue to do that which God is directing you to do. Be it within this family or even outside there. Joseph's brothers hated him, but he still preserved their life. When they hate you, show them love. When they speak against you, show them love. When they plan things against you, show them love because you are, pre you are a preserver of destiny. God will always use a man. God will always use a human, a, a woman. So, just do like Esther did. If you read the book of Esther, Esther was used of God to preserve the lives of the Jews. As in chapter number 4, verse number 14. So, you are a preserver of destiny. I am a preserver of destiny. We must bring people to that, that new level where God wants them to be. We must turn with them when they are crying, go and wipe their tears. When they are in need, go and support them. Stand with them. Preserve their lives. Preserve their lives. Preserve their destiny. Be a destiny preserved to them. When they are suffering, be there to comfort them. Be there to stand with them. Amen? Amen. Because you are a destiny preserved. Preservers of destiny. If you go to 1 Samuel 19, 1 to 7, you will read about the story of Jonathan and David. <coughs> Jonathan and David. When Saul was planning to kill David, Jonathan would always go and reveal the secret of what, what the father was planning to do against David to him. So, Jonathan was used, used of God to preserve the life of David because he was revealing the secrets of his father to David. So he was a destiny preserver of the life of David. If he didn't <coughs> reveal the secrets of what the father was planning, then David could have been killed by his father. But he was revealing the secrets every now and then. My father is planning this 
So do this. As David was going to dress him up every now and then, then he was saying, hey, I had my father saying this, planning this. So please do this before this happens. So Jonathan was a preserver of the destiny of David. When King Aaron was planning to kill Jesus, the angel of God appeared to Joseph, the parents of Jesus, to take uh, Jesus out of that town, out of that city, out of that nation, to Egypt. The parents of Jesus preserved the destiny of Jesus. They took him out of danger. You can take somebody out of the danger in their lives because you are a preserver of destiny. You can take them from that bad situation. Take them out of it. Don't sit aside and laugh at them. Don't say they, they're supposed to go through it. They deserve it. No, no, no. Just get in and take them out of that danger because you are a preserver of destiny. We are preservers of destiny. Be there, comfort them, strengthen them. They may be your enemies. They may be speaking against you. Maybe they didn't help you when you needed help. But the Bible says, do not pay evil with evil. Pay evil with doing good. Do good to them. Let them see Christ in you. Let them see the God of heaven in you. Let them see the love of God in you. Be a preserver of destiny. Amen? Amen. We can preserve a life. Wherever we are, we can preserve a life. I believe it. You can preserve a life. I can preserve a life. By the grace of God, we can. We can. We can. My wife said we have uh, over 200 children that we support every three months. You are preserving lives. They can go to school. They can have uniforms. They can have lunch. Because people from Damascus Road Church give every now and then to preserve their destinies. Start with them in prayer. When they are downcast, encourage them to stand strong. Amen? Amen. It is all possible. If you will realize, if you will know that you are a destiny preserve, you are a preserve of destiny. Let this sink inside your heart, inside your mind. Let it get into your body system that you are a preserver of destiny. You are not just here on earth to enjoy yourself. You'll be happy, but you are here on earth to preserve a destiny. A destiny of a man, a destiny of a woman, a destiny of a boy, a destiny of a girl, a destiny of a child is in your hand. You are the one that God wants to use to preserve. May God help us. May God help me. May God help you to preserve a destiny. A man that I don't know, a woman that I do not know, a man that I know, a woman that I do not know, to preserve their destiny. Wherever I am, in that office, in that school, along the street, in the community, may God help us to preserve our destiny. In Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When Jesus died, if you go back to the New Testament, is this man called Joseph of Arimathea 
who is saying, I want to take his body and preserve the body. They wanted to preserve the body of Jesus, a dead body. I think he had a revelation that after three days, this body will rise up again. So Joseph of Arimathea, he took the body of Jesus and he put it in a tomb that had never been used before. He preserved the body of Jesus. He preserved the destiny of Jesus so that after three days, the Lord would rise up again. Somebody's life may be in a tomb today even as we talk with you and speak with you. But you can take that life and preserve it for the resurrection of that life, of that destiny in the next few days. You can take that man out of that tomb because you are a preserver of destiny. God can use anything. He can use you. He can use me. Don't say I'm weak. Don't say I can't do it. Don't say I don't have the resources. Just take a step of faith and tell that man or that woman, I am here to help you in my small way. Then God will come in. You can preserve a destiny. Amen? Amen? We are all preservers of destiny. We are all preservers of life. Preserve a life. Preserve a destiny. It is my prayer today that God will make us preservers of life, preservers of destiny to those who are in need in our society, are in need in our community, in the name of Jesus Christ. I want us to pray this morning. After me. You know, time after me. So let's bow for our word of prayer. <clears throat> Father God, we thank you for your word today. Just want to pray that the word that we've just heard today will sink deep into our spirit, deep into our hearts, and it will touch us and change us. But Jehovah God, we will realize that we are agents of change under the sun. We will realize that we are preservers of destiny for other men and women under the sun. Today, Lord, I pray that you may touch us all. Begin with me, Lord, touch me, that I may continue to get the revelation that I'm a preserver of destiny for men and women under the sun. As you touch me, Lord, I pray that even in this congregation you shall touch these men and these women. That Jehovah Father, we shall realize that we need to make a difference in our community. We need to make a difference in our family. We need to make a difference in our offices. We need to make a difference even along the streets. Because we are preservers of destiny of other men like us. I pray that the Holy Spirit of the living God, you will make us realize, Jehovah Father, our past failures should not always bring us down. Whatever we went through, like Joseph, should not always bring us down, but we should stand and do that which you purpose us to do in this life. Be preservers of destiny for other men and other women. Joseph went through a lot of things. They put him down in the pit. Later they sold him to Potiphar. And later he went to prison. But Jehovah Father, he did not give up on his brothers and sisters and the family members. When he went to the palace and he was in the high office, Jehovah Father, he did not pay them for their evil with evil, but he paid them with good. I pray that Jehovah Father, you will help us to pay them that did evil to us with good for the glory and honor of your name. That Jehovah Father, we shall stand and show forth thy love to them 
in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, when they look at us, may they see you. When they are sick, let them see us, Lord God, as people that will bring them healing in their hearts, in their bodies, in the name of Jesus Christ. May we be your hands, may we be your feet, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Father God, help this man, help these women, help me, Jehovah Father, that we may be preservers of destiny for the sons and daughters of God under the sun. I pray for strength for anybody that is here that is weak, Lord. Any that was full of fear, Lord, I pray for boldness in the name of Jesus. That, Lord, they will be able to stand. They will be able to be courageous and be able to help others that I need as they preserve their destinies. For the parents that are here, Lord, I pray that you will give us direction. You will give us guidance that, Jehovah Father, we may preserve the destiny of our children in the name of Jesus Christ. We may give them guidance. We may give them direction in this life, O oh God, and even the life to come in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, I thank you even for this opportunity to stand in this altar today and minister and share your word. Lord, I continue to pray for blessings upon this church. Damascus Road Church, I go to pray for your anointing in this place. I go to pray that the favor of God and the fire of the Holy Spirit of God will continue to burn in this place in Jesus' name. Whoever comes in this place for the first time, Lord, I pray that they will have an encounter with you. And Jehovah Father, they will make this place their church in Jesus' name. Let there be an overflow of the Spirit of God in this place, O oh God. Even as we go to uh, worship you in this altar, O oh God, as a church and as a people from all nations of the world, God, I pray that there shall be unity like never before in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare and decree today that there shall be an overflow in this place, that the anointing of God will come to work in this place. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray and we believe. And if you believe it, say amen. amen. If you believe it, say amen. 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 So may the Lord God bless you so much. I believe that you got something out of that message. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. God bless you. Today we, uh, we will be sharing our communion for the Lord's Supper. Um, every first Sunday of, uh, of the month we, uh, we take communion in this church. But uh, before we do it, I just have a, a quick announcement. Um, apparently, during the offering, uh, someone put more than money. Someone put uh, his key. So we have someone here with a big heart. Offered. I don't know if it's a car or it's an apartment or I don't know what it is. But someone lost this key. So if it was your purpose to offer it, thank God. If not, at the end, you just come and... Uh, no. it, it is with an Airbus. If you, if you can open that. Oh, okay. It's a bank. Um, now about uh, communion. Um, com what is communion? Uh, communion is just... Uh, the practice that Jesus initiated and um, he asked us to do, to do this in remembrance, remembrance sorry, of him. Um, it is the way for us to remember that one day Jesus uh, left his throne, he came, he died for us, he died for your sins, for my sins, and uh, he rose again to give us victory. And like Pastor Ken said, he came to save us and to preserve our destiny. And uh, he said that we have to, to do this in remembrance of him. And um, so that, this is what, what, why we do it. And um, who can participate in this communion? In this church, we just encourage every believer, every follower of Jesus Christ. Uh, you don't need to be a member of this uh, congregation or uh, of this denomination. If you are a believer of Jesus Christ, you are free to take part uh, in, in this. And how do we do it? Uh, it's quite simple. We have one table there on the back with bread and juice. Um, the, worship, the worship thing will sing some songs and uh, just feel free to stand up and go uh, take a bread, dip it in the juice. And uh, we encourage you to take this time to reflect and to, to think about what Jesus has done for you and how he gave his life for you and how you can also apply it 
uh, to also be a preserver of other people's life and other people's destiny. So uh, why you take this communion, just have, have this time uh, with Jesus and let God uh, talk to you. So um, we will pray and then we will let the worship team lead us in this communion. Let's pray. Lord, we thank, you for, uh, we thank you for your word and we thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you because you, you left your throne one day, you came to save us. Uh, you wanted to show us how you love us. Uh, you came to preserve our lives. You came to give us a new life. Uh, and because of your death, because of your resurrection, we have victory uh, over sin and death. And today we want to celebrate that uh, by taking this communion. And we pray that you will uh, continue to speak to us, not only today, but during the week. And uh, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your, for your, for your Holy Spirit who is with us also. May you bless this moment, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you.
any sort of fear or to any sort of condemnation. Because we have been made one with your family, Father. Your blood runs through our veins. And through the blood you spilled, we realize how precious we are to you, Father, and you would do that for us. And that you would call us your children, even though we weren't always faithful to you. We have the power to change lives, Lord. I thank you for the power that comes from you, Father. I pray that this week we'd be filled with the power, Father. We'd be hungry for that power. That we'd be longing for everything that you can do through us and in us, Father. That we wouldn't be limited by whatever human spirit is holding us back from. Because we are your children and we share in the legacy that comes from you. You're so powerful, Lord. I pray that we take part of that power in us.